Hi, I'm Priscilla and I am a scientific content writer at Ice and Science. In this video, I will briefly go through tips and practical suggestions to isolate EVs from culture conditioned media, CCM, defined by media where cells have been grown at. Cell cultures are model systems simulating cellular processes in the laboratory. Cell cultures have been used as a platform for research in many different areas like understanding biological processes, investigating diagnostic potential, new drug development, or production of biologicals for nanomedicine. I will be talking about and using the term EV. However, the same principles are applied to isolation of viruses or virus-like particles from CCM. The advantages of isolating EVs from CCM are many. Firstly, it is a scalable process where specific protocols can be repeated and adjusted in smaller or larger scales. It allows mass production of EVs when the procedure is scaled up or automated. For example, when EVs are required for nanomedicine or therapeutic purposes. It is subject to optimization, as each step from culture conditions to EV isolation protocol can be modified and improved depending on desired outcomes. In the same way, a number of variables in the cell culture systems can be controlled and studied. For example, effects of different stimuli on EV production or composition. Now, to successfully culture cells without any contamination and in a safe manner to the user, a few facilities and equipment are necessary. A laminar flow cabinet, or also called tissue culture hood, which ensures sterile environment to handle samples, where no air-transported microorganisms can land in your sample, such as viruses, bacterial or fungal spores. As culture media is full of nutrients, if these microorganisms fall into your CCM sample, their growth will be quickly promoted with not only their uncontrolled duplication being a problem, but also their corresponding released EVs will contaminate the EVs of interest. A cell culture incubator is also needed, which controls oxygen, carbon dioxide, temperature and humidity to provide suitable conditions for cell growth. And finally, a centrifuge with suitable speed and tube holder specifications for the experimental needs of this protocol. Here's a basic workflow of how to process CCM for EV isolation. First, you start with an X amount of CCM volume retrieved from culturing your cells. Then cells and debris are removed, and then there is an optional pre-concentration step, and then the core EV isolation procedure, and then another optional post-concentration step to obtain a preparation of pure and enriched EVs, which can be used for any downstream application. Cell culture is the initial step in isolating EVs from CCM. The classical way to culture cells is growing them in 2D culture flasks, where cells grow adhered as monolayer to the bottom surface or in suspension in the medium. An advantage of using these type of flasks is that cells are easily monitored while growing to follow indicators of cell death, cell density, or contamination. Cells also can be fully retrieved for easy enumeration and health assessment at different time points and placed back into another flask for further growth. The variables affecting cell growth in these flasks are type of cell line, cell density, growth media, and additives. To enhance cell growth, the most used additive in tissue culture is fetal bovine serum, FBS, or fetal calf serum, FCS, in concentrations ranging from 2% to 20% in the culture media. This serum is obtained from cows and, like serum from any animal, contains vast amount of EVs. Therefore, FBS EVs will substantially contribute to the EV population isolated from CCM when this supplement is used. It's worth noting that FBS can be significantly depleted of EVs before using it in culture media, so the impact in studied EVs are minimal. After cell growth has been optimized, factors influencing EV yield or composition include cell density, media volume, oxygen levels, among others. Another type of cell culture system suitable for EV isolation is a bioreactor. A bioreactor is a type of flask that grows cells in high density in a cell chamber that is separate from the nutrient chamber. Nutrients pass through the separating membrane and EVs released by the cells stay in the cell bottom chamber as they cannot pass through the membrane. Bioreactors are seeded in high number of cells, in average from 10 large classic flasks 
providing a high-density cell growth with a 3D phenotype instead of the monolayer achieved with the other classic flasks. There is no need of passaging or subculturing cells in bioreactors, as cells cannot be retrieved, leading to reducing costs of plastic wear and labor associated with frequent subculturing. It does require, though, a large volume of media to be replaced at least weekly to feed the cells. Live cells cannot be visualized under the microscope throughout the lifespan of the bioreactor, which can be up to six months, since there is no direct access to the cell growth area. High-density cell growth has slightly different requirements compared to classic cell growth, where FPS replacements can be used in the cell chamber or FPS used in the nutrient chamber without FPS EVs contaminating the cell EVs. And finally, EVs from a large number of cells are concentrated in a small CCM volume of approximately 15 ml, where CCM samples can be harvested twice a week. The volume required to obtain enough EVs will depend on the downstream application. For 2D tissue culture flasks, which can hold a certain volume of media per number of cells in the flask area, more CCM volume roughly represents more cells coming from more flasks. In that context, it is recommended to start from a minimum of 100 ml of CCM and up to 1 liter or more to avoid significant EV loss during the whole isolation procedure. For bioreactors, EVs present in 12 to 18 ml of CCM have shown to have equivalent amount to those obtained from 10 to 15 large classic flasks or 300 to 800 ml of CCM. The next step in EV isolation is to remove remaining cells from CCM by centrifuging CCM at 200 to 500 G for five minutes at room temperature or 37 degrees. It is important in this step to be gentle and not damage the cells with higher spins, since this will artificially release cell death derived EVs. Then, supernatant from cell-removing spin is transferred to another sterile tube, where sample is centrifuged at 2000 G for 5 to 10 minutes to pellet large debris. Now cell and debris-free CCM is ready for EV isolation. There is an optional initial step here where large EVs, or also called microvesicles, can be pelleted with a spin at 10,000 to 20,000 G for 30 minutes and resuspended in desired buffer volume. Supernatant from the last spin is transferred to another sterile tube and contains small EVs or nano EVs. When the CCM starting volume is considerably large, then a pre-concentration step is recommended. There are several methods to concentrate EVs in a sample based on different principles. However, the most common one seems to be ultrafiltration. Ultrafiltration allows a separation of EVs by size by passing the sample through a filter with protein-based pore sizes, for example, 10, 100 or 300 kilodaltons. Everything larger than the pore size is retained, basically all EVs, while most proteins pass through. The pressure applied to the ultrafiltration device can be centrifugal force or cross flow, which uses a pump. Input volumes of ultrafiltration vary from 0.5 ml to 1 liter or more, depending on the device's specifications, and samples can be concentrated from 20 to 50 times. After the pre-concentration step, the sample is ready for purification by size exclusion chromatography or QEV columns. There are two types of resins in QEVs. One has a pore size of 35 nanometers and isolation particle range of 35 to 350 nanometers. And the other one has a pore size of 70 nanometers and an isolation particle range of 70 to 1000 nanometers. The particle size ranges in these columns overlap, but also emphasize in isolation of EVs from two big groups exosomes or microvesicles. There are different QEV columns suitable for different CCM input volumes. For example, for 500 ml of starting CCM, concentrated 50 times to 10 ml, a QEV 10 column would perfectly suit the sample volume, resulting in approximately 20 ml of collected pure EV-rich volume. 
for 50 ml of starting CCM, concentrated 50 times to 1 ml, a QEV original would suit this sample volume, resulting in 1.5 ml of collected pure EV reach volume. QEV columns can be run by the automatic fraction collector AFC, with automated flushing and fraction collection and customizable settings, like buffer volume and amount and volume of each fraction. The AFC allows standardization and reproducibility on the EV purification process. Here is an example of a dilution profile in terms of particles in bars and proteins in lines, where it can be seen that EV rich volumes are separated from the majority of proteins contaminating the sample. After the QEV run, EV rich fractions can be pulled and used as such or can be further concentrated for any downstream applications that require highly enriched EV samples in small volumes. For this concentration step, similar methods can be used to the pre-concentration, like ultrafiltration. However, there is also a new product launched by ISON, which enables concentration of EVs after the purification with a QEV column. This QEV concentration kit is based on polymer particles which bind to EVs with high affinity, enabling pelleting the whole complex without the need of ultracentrifugation speeds, which might damage the integrity of EVs. Finally, sample characterization can be performed with EV count, size and charge assessment by TRPS. Molecular profiling can be done by quantification of DNA, RNA and proteins present EVs. Presence of population-specific EV markers can be done by Western blood assays or visualization can be done by microscopic techniques. Thank you for watching and please visit isa.com for application notes and guides to help you work with different nanoparticle samples.